In this lesson, I'm going to give you a very light touch look at the Agile development methodology. Now, do be aware that certainly in my experience, there are a lot of people that talk about being Agile and they use this as a way of effectively not really preparing for the path ahead and and just I'm going to say making things up as they go along, but there's a little bit of that to it. But the Agile development methodology is a bit more than that. And I'd like to talk about that to you now. So first of all, with the Agile development methodology, we have we start off with user stories. Now, a user story is an expression of the the intention of the 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 product that you're trying to create. And it, they're written in a particular way. And there is actually gonna be a lesson specifically on writing user stories. But an example of a user story could be as a HR member of staff, I want to be able to understand the status of the tasks associated with bringing a new user into the organization. That would be a potential user story that we could then take forward. Clearly, if we were developing a whole app, we might need a series of user stories and we might need to arrange them in a particular way. Now, in fact, they do get arranged into epics. I may not be completely accurate on that, but that gives you the general idea. But in terms of building uh, building apps for our organization, typically when you're building a Canvas app, it's quite a, it's a relatively small unit of work. It's not your entire uh, enterprise resource planning application uh, that may not be what you're using this for so ethics tend to lean in that direction now in terms of the work the work is arranged into sprints now sprints are kind of time delimited uh, elements of, of activity. So it could be a one week sprint, it could be a two week sprint, it could be one month, but it's, it's certainly time delimited. And the way in which you build up a sprint is you have a design phase. And essentially in that design phase, you're talking about what it is you're going to do during that phase. Now, here's the thing about the tasks. The way in which the methodology works is that you, you can bring in tasks in the design phase, but you can't actually, um, but once you're into your sprint, you're not allowed to add more tasks in. That's part of the methodology. Uh, and, you know, you can play it with it as you will. Now, one important part of the methodology is you have daily stand-ups. The idea of these is they're quite simple. You're supposed to say, what did you do yesterday? What do you have to do today? And what are the things that are stopping you from proceeding? And they are supposed to be stand-ups. They're supposed to be short, sharp, and you're supposed to get through them very quickly. That, that is the idea of your um, the, the way in which it works. Uh, now, in um, this should really be in the design phase, but um, the the in the design phase, you have your tasks and you assign users uh, or other owners to those tasks um, and they're part of your sprint. And as part of building those tasks up, you have estimates for the amount of time that it's going to take to do those tasks. And that helps with understanding um, where you are in the in the various uh, in the process. Now, you can see that there are some things that you may or may not choose to do. You could not you could choose not to do the estimates. But obviously, in the context of a much bigger organ organization or a big, bigger project, maybe you do need that sort of control. Now, at the end of the sprint, the idea is you have a demonstration of the functionality you've then created. But you may find that actually, um, it, you may find that uh, that it is a bit more iterative than that. Because bear in mind, with perhaps we have it, uh, we create, we have the ability to create new functionality very, very quickly. So it's up to you to choose how to relate to your business users in this instance. Now. There are there are lots of ways of applying these the agile development methodology. One of them is DevOps. And what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm just going to show you a little bit of a little window into Azure DevOps so that you can consider that it might actually be something that you would find useful. So we're now going to head over into a little demonstration. 
So I'm actually going to start from the start here. I've gone to portal.azure.com and what I'm actually going to type in here is DevOps and we'll go to, uh, you can go to DevOps Starter or your Azure DevOps organizations. Then you can go down to my DevOps organizations. It's actually gonna take you out to, uh, it's gonna take you out to that area. Now that I've got to here, I can actually, I can create these these concepts of organizations. Uh, so I guess they they could be um, projects, they could be organizations that you're, you're performing work for. In this case, I've just got a test project here and I've got, it's called Hello DevOps. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna see that we can actually create a sprint and we can put tasks into that sprint. So if I go on to this idea of boards here, um, you can actually see that I've actually created a, a, a user story. In fact, what I might do here now is I'm just gonna go on to new work item, user story, and, it, and I'm just gonna invent a user story. Um, and I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna call this um, task owner um, activity. Uh, and I'm gonna say something like as a task owner, I need to be able to sign off tasks to indicate that they have been completed so that HR are aware something like that. And, and I'm gonna put that state is new. You actually find that when it when it's a new state, then, then that's been created that way. Um, and I can click save on that. And if I go back to the work items, we'll see that we've now got this, um, the, these two user stories, and that is the symbol for the user story. So moving on from there, we can then sort of think about sprints. So we can do a sprint here, and in fact, I can go and click on the right hand side and click on new sprint. And I, I don't know, maybe I'll call this um, initial workshop or, or something. Let's just initial workshop. Um, and I'll just give it a start and end date. So let's just do it starting. Um, let's start it there and we will end it here and I will click create on that. So that's my new sprint created, but I have no work items in there. So I'll click on a work item and I will say um, test work item and you'll create it as a new item and then you can assign it to someone and you can do things like, uh, you can do things like, um, well, eventually you'll be able to actually indicate how much, uh, how much work needs to be done in, in that area. So now I'm just gonna click save and close. Uh, and then what I can do is, the thing that I do the most on here is I look at the queries because I find them the most useful. So what I could do is, I kind of do go to all here. Yeah, assign to me. So I can look at the assign to me items there. Um, and in fact, I can't actually see the uh, the query, the, the uh, work item that we just created. In fact, it looks, yeah, let's just check that one out. That says test work item. I may have made a mistake on that. Let's just check that. It's looking, behaving like a, in fact, it's a user story there. So that's a mistake. Um, so I'll just go back to the work items, click on there. I'm actually gonna delete that one there uh, and click delete again. Now I'm gonna click new work item and it should be a task um, and then task for me and I will say my original estimate is, uh, and you can put in, usually that people do it in hours, but you can do it in unit, units of activity. I can say, well, it's four and I've got four um, remaining and then I can click save on this. In fact, I can click and say that it's for me and then come off there. And then I can now go onto my queries because that allows me to understand the tasks that I have um, th that I need to actually complete. When I've actually completed those tasks, um, what I can do is I can uh, I can click on the task themselves. Uh, in fact, it's on the right hand side here, and I can give it a, a new status of being closed to indicate that you actually completed it. Um, so, and you might that you might then tell people about that during your stand up. So this lesson was really by no means uh, an exhaustive 
list of all of the aspects of the agile development me methodology and it certainly isn't all of azure devops but it does hopefully give you something that will allow you to be a little bit more successful with with getting started with your apps and in the next lesson we're going to start to look at user stories and how to write them properly i'll see you in the next lesson